That sounds awful. Seriously. Awful. Point one earthquake shakes Osaka, Japan. South Korean Foreign Ministry or Minister says they are flexible on the timing of ending the long-standing Korean War. First Lady Melania Trump makes a rare political plea to call for bipartisan immigration reform to fix the issue of the separation of migrant children from their parents at the U.S. border. And fresh fears of a trade war between the world's top two economies sent Asian markets tumbling on Monday after the United States and China imposed tit-for-tat tariffs on billions of dollars of imports. Mama Angeles, wherever you're watching from around the world, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We welcome our viewers here in the Philippines and around the world. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sam Cepeda. And now to the news.
We begin our program with the major earthquake that hit Osaka, Japan and left at least three people dead and at least 200 people are injured. At least two elderly men and a little girl are dead from the major earthquake. It hit a suburb in between the major cities of Osaka and Kyoto Monday morning. Television images showed buildings and cars swaying and burst pipe or burst pipes spewing water after the earthquake, which struck at the height of rush hour in the city of around 2 million people. However, there was no large-scale destruction and no tsunami warning issued after the earthquake, although commuters were stranded and tens of thousands were left without power. A number of train services were suspended, including the Shinkansen bullet train, as multiple smaller aftershocks followed the quake. The, among the casualties one, was a nine-year-old girl who died in the city of Takatsuki, north of Osaka, reportedly trapped by a collapsed wall following the earthquake. Local media said the other two dead were an 80-year-old man killed by a collapsing wall and a man trapped under a bookcase in his home. The Fire and Disaster Management Agency said more than 200 people were injured Japan sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire where many of the world's earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are recorded. On March 11, to recall 2011, a devastating magnitude 9 quake struck under the Pacific Ocean and the resulting tsunami caused widespread damage and claimed thousands of lives. It also sent three reactors into meltdown at the Fukushima nuclear plant, causing Japan's worst post-war disaster and the most serious nuclear accident since Chernobyl in 1986. The Nuclear Regulation Authority said it had detected no problems at its local atomic power plants. But some companies, including Honda, said they had suspended operations at local plants. Meanwhile, authorities say another similar-sized quake could hit the area in the next few days. Agency officials also issued this warning. In the regions with strong tremors, please be careful about the collapsed uh, furniture and mudslide. People are advised to pay attention to uh, the situation after this. And please be careful not to get near to the dangerous places. In the past, the Earthquake of the similar scale has occurred with a 10 or 20 percent chances. And in the region with strong tremors, in the following one week, the people are advised to be careful about six minus possibility of six minus earthquake, because the earthquake of the similar scale uh, can happen after the serious earthquake. Meanwhile, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe updated the reporters on the situation. Take a listen. Our basic policy is uh, the people's lives first. So the entire government uh, in coordination in responding to this situation. Our first priority is to grasp the damage and do all, do everything we can in order to save lives and to provide to provide relief to the affected people, as well as providing necessary information with the e people of Japan. Meanwhile, the 6.1 magnitude quake that hit the western city during the morning commute was the largest since records began in 1923. A number of casualties have been reported. Two men in their 80s died in Osaka City and in Ibaraki. A nine-year-old girl was killed in the city of Takatsuki in western Japan on Monday morning, according to Japan's Fire and Disaster Management Agency. More than 200 people were injured. We have a report coming in from Osaka, Japan. Here's Lou Omelda. 
A 6.1 magnitude earthquake greeted Osaka and its neighboring prefectures in West Japan early morning on Monday, bringing chaos in the areas with three dead and several others injured. According to data released by the Japan Meteorological Agency, the strong earthquake that happened at 7.58 Japan Standard Time occurred at a depth of around 13 kilometers in the northern part of Osaka Prefecture. It registered a lower 6 out of a 7 on the Japanese seismic intensity scale. This scale would bring any unsecured furniture to move or fall down while people would find it hard to remain steady on such a strong movement, the agency said. Adding that a shallow epicenter had caused high-intensity tremors despite the earthquake's relatively small magnitude. According to police, a man in his 80s and a 9-year-old girl were reported dead after a wall fell over them. Another 80-year-old man also died in the suburbs of Osaka. Disaster Management Minister Hachiro Okonogi said several people were buried under a collapsed building. Authorities are still working to confirm any casualty. Several train delays and cancellations, traffic disruptions, injuries, and fire casualties have also been reported in the cities of Osaka, Kyoto, Mie, and Hyogo prefectures. Commuters in the morning rush hour were left stranded on the streets and in stations as the incident disrupted Shinkansen operations and also other railways in central and western Japan, canceling over 60 bullet trains at 11 a.m. Eagle News have talked to several residents in Osaka. One worker was on her way to work when the ground started shaking and she had difficulty steadying herself up. Another one had to climb up 30 floors in her office building uh, because all the elevators have stopped. Several establishments, offices, and old houses, even household items, were also damaged. The agency said that the most recent quake is the strongest one felt in Western Japan since 1923 when they started the official records. Reporting from Osaka, Japan, this is Luis Stefano Melda for Eagle News International, and I am one with 25. To other news now, Yonhap News Agency reports that South Korea will be flexible on the specific timing and format of ending the Korean War. South Korea aims to formally end the Korean War this year. But the process requires consultations with Pyongyang and Washington. Foreign Minister Kang kyung Hwa told reporters shortly after a telephone conversation with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that the Trump administration is willing to declare a formal end to the 1950-53 war. It was also agreed between the leaders of the two Koreas last April during the inter-Korean summit. Now, in the wake of the World War II, as the Cold War began, the Korean Peninsula was divided along the 38th parallel. The North received Soviet backing while the United States supported the South. In 1948, the two sides became officially known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in the North and the Republic of Korea in the South. The Korean War broke out on June 25, 1950, when the North's army invaded the South, capturing Seoul within days. North Korean forces advanced to the tip of the peninsula. A UN coalition led by American troops stepped in to force the North Koreans back pushing them as far as the Sino-Korean border. Chinese forces crossed into the north to help launch a counter-offensive. UN forces retaliated and eventually in May 1951, the border between the two Koreas was fixed around the 38th parallel. In July of 1953, North Korea signed the ceasefire agreement with the U.S. The end of the fighting. An estimated 2 to 4 million people died or disappeared during the conflict. No formal peace treaty has been signed, leaving North and South Korea still technically at war. And in more signs of warming relations, Koreas discussed joint teams at the Asian Games. The two Koreas on Monday discussed forming unified teams for the upcoming Asian Games in Indonesia to extend the bargaining diplo diplomacy on the peninsula that took off at the Winter Olympics. At their historic summit in April, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in had agreed to join participation in international sports events such as the 2018 Asian Games. 
on the agenda for the meeting Monday are proposals for a joint march and unified teams for the Asian Games, said Jong Jung Ryul, South Korea's chief delegate. The Games will be held in Jakarta and uh, Palembang from uh, August 18 to September 2. The rapprochement on the Korean Peninsula was triggered earlier this year when Kim decided to send athletes, cheerleaders, and her sister as an envoy to the Pyeongchang Games. Diplomatic efforts have gathered pace since leading to a landmark summit between Kim and U.S. President Donald Trump in Singapore last week. South Korea on Monday began two days of war games to practice defending the disputed Dokdo Islands off its east coast against an unlikely attack by Japan. The drills come just days after President Trump announced the suspension of long-running U.S. joint exercises with South Korea, aimed at deterring North Korea, calling them expensive and provocative. The two-day exercise, tiny compared with the suspended U.S.-South Korea war games, will involve six warships and seven aircraft and had begun. A unit of Marines will land on the largely barren rocky islets inhabited by around 40 people, mostly police officers. Tokyo reacted angrily to the extremely deplorable drills, with the foreign ministry saying it had, quote, strongly protested via the usual diplomatic channels. It said the exercises were absolutely unacceptable and strongly demanded their suspension. While an attack from Japan is deemed highly unlikely, South Korea first staged the drills in 1986 and has conducted them twice a year since 2003. Seoul has controlled the islets in the Sea of Japan, East Sea, since the end in 1945 of Japan's 35-year colonial rule over the Korean Peninsula. Tokyo, meanwhile, also claims the islands known as Takashima in Japan and accuses Seoul of occupying them illegally. U.S. First Lady Melania Trump has made a rare political plea to end the deeply controversial practice of separating migrant children from their parents at the U.S. border. The Zero Tolerance Border Security Policy, implemented by President Donald Trump's administration, has sparked outrage on both sides of the political aisle. Trump sa uh, said he wants the separations to end, but continues to blame opposition Democrats for the crisis, which critics say is one of his own making. Mrs. Trump hates to see children separated from their families and hopes both sides of the aisle can finally come together to achieve successful immigration reform, her spokeswoman Stephanie Grisham told CNN. She believes we need to be a country that follows all laws, but also a country that governs with heart. In a recent six-week period, there were nearly 2,000 family separations following a crackdown on illegal border crossings. Adults who try to cross the border, many planning to seek asylum, are placed in custody and face criminal prosecution for illegal entry. The recent child detentions, reportedly including babies and toddlers, have resulted in some shelters and foster homes reporting that they are running out of space. The UN Human Rights Chief urged Washington to stop separating migrant children from their parents at the U.S. border. Take a listen. The thought that any state would seek to deter parents by inflicting such abuse on children is unconscionable. I call on the United States to immediately end the practice of forcible separation of these children, and I encourage the government to at last uh, ratify the Convention on the Rights of the Child in order to ensure that the fundamental rights of all children, whatever their administrative status, will be at the center of all domestic laws and policies. The Zero Tolerance Border Security Policy implemented by President Trump's administration has sparked global outrage. 
The government has said that during one recent six-week period, nearly 2,000 minors were separated from their parents or adult guardians. The number of separations has jumped since early May when Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced that all migrants illegally crossing the U.S. border with Mexico would be arrested, regardless of whether the adults were seeking asylum. Under the laws of this country, illegal entry into America is a misdemeanor. Not a felony, but it's a misdemeanor. It's a crime. Re-entry after having been deported is a felony. Having children does not give you immunity from arrest and prosecution. Bringing Since children cannot be sent to the facilities where their parents are held, they are separated. Five immigrants died and several others were injured Sunday after a high-speed chase with Border Patrol agents in Texas ended in a crash. The crash took place in the city of Big Wells outside San Antonio after Border Patrol agents tried to stop the driver of an SUV. A total of 14 people were in the vehicle, including the driver who was not seriously hurt. It coded Dimmit County Sheriff Marion Boyd as saying the driver was traveling at speeds of 100 miles or that's 160 kilometers per hour while trying to flee from deputies. While traveling at top speed, the driver lost control of the SUV, which rolled, causing the deaths and injuries. Four of the passengers were pronounced dead at the scene and another died at the hospital. The injured were taken to hospitals for treatment. The SUV driver was arrested by Homeland Security agents. The deadly crash comes as the United States grapples with a swirling crisis over illegal immigration that has sent nearly 2,000 children separated from their parents over a recent six-week period. In other news now, the Taliban refused to extend their ceasefire beyond Sunday night, dampening hopes for peace after jubilant scenes over the aid holidays in Afghanistan. The announcement came after a suicide attack in the western eastern part of the country killed at least 18 people in a crowd celebrating the Muslim holiday, the second assault in as many days to mar the unprecedented ceasefire. Kabul extended its ceasefire with the Taliban by 10 days, but said security forces would defend themselves if attacked, according to a spokesman for President Ashraf Ghani. In a tweet, the Afghan leader also requested the militant group halt hostilities, but the Taliban said fighting would resume. The announcement has raised concern among some Afghans over the number of Taliban who have taken advantage of the ceasefire to enter cities around the country, including the capital Kabul, and may still be there when the truce ends. The Islamic State group, which was not part of the truce, claimed it had carried out its second suicide attack in two days in the province of Nangarhar. Meanwhile, Afghan former President Hamid Karzai has expressed hope that Afghanistan would be a place of cooperation rather than a confrontation. In Bonn, Germany, Malou Francisco attended an international conference that tackled this issue. Malou? The former president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, proposed ways by which this country can attain lasting peace and stability. He made the proposal at the Global Media Forum in Bonn, Germany, an international conference that focuses on the role of media and global issues. And this year's theme is global inequalities. Karzai made it clear that success can only happen if the Afghans are the ones truly in charge of the peace process and their internal affairs. He explained that peace can come only when the United States and the neighboring Pakistan, along with other stakeholders, genuinely and sincerely support the peace process. It is imperative today, ladies and gentlemen, that the United States regain the confidence of all the stakeholders in our part of the world and internationally, and in particular to regain the confidence of the Afghan people. Through a new compact with the Afghan people, 
and through a new understanding with the major international stakeholders. Here, Russia, China, India, and Iran are prominent powers in the region and relevant to the conflict that can make a long-term contribution to peace and stability in Afghanistan. Karzai became the head of state of Afghanistan in December 2001 after the Taliban government was overthrown. In 2002, he was appointed the interim president of the Afghan Transitional Administration and became the president after the 2004 presidential election and was re-elected for a second term until 2014. The former Afghan president named the conditions that must be met to attain true peace and stability in his country. Afghanistan regains ownership of its own processes and has sovereignty over its affairs, with particular emphasis on holding free and fair elections and the convening of the traditional lawyer jerk. Karzai mentioned what he called a new world order of interaction due to recent developments in international relations. In view of that, major international and regional actors should develop a new security mechanism, making Afghanistan a place of international cooperation and not a place of confrontation. He stressed that decades of use of extremism and as an instrument of policy has caused the long suffering of the people of both Afghanistan and Pakistan. He expressed his hope that the people of Pakistan recognize the danger and join hands with the Afghans in addressing this issue and all other issues affecting their two countries. Towards the end of his speech at the Global Media Forum, Karzai called on Germany to convene another conference on Afghanistan, similar to the one held in Bonn in 2001, where international political leaders gathered to agree on new leadership structures for Afghanistan. The Global Media Forum is held every year with over 2,000 participants representing the media, education, business, government, international organizations, and civil society sectors to discuss the role of media in dealing with global issues. Organized by the German international broadcaster Deutsche Welle, the GMF 2018 was held June 11 to 13. At World Conference Center Bonn, Germany, I am Mary Lou Francisco for Eagle News, and I am one with 25. Thank you, Malou. At least 20 people were hurt early Sunday in a shooting at an all-night arts festival in Trenton, the state capital of New Jersey, that also left one suspect dead. Let's listen in. That multiple individuals attending the art all-night event opened fire within the venue and to, to this date and time multiple weapons have been recovered. At this point there are 20 individuals who were treated for a variety of uh, gunshot wounds as well as other injuries. Supposed to be an event to bring the a 33 year old man one of the suspects was killed and another was and taken into sudden, custody. Among the injured at the Art All Night Trenton event was a 13-year-old boy in critical condition now. Officials offered no immediate theory as to what prompted the shooting spree or how it unfolded. And all of a sudden, my brother goes to me and goes, Oh, you hear them gunfire? I go, sounds like fireworks. He goes, No, that's gunfire. And next thing you know, we turn around and everybody's running down the street, all hell broke loose. So then we come out here and the next thing you know, it was like my brother said, Shots were fired and a couple people got shot. I don't know if they got the shooter or what, but it was it's pretty nice. Art All Night Trenton is an annual event in the city which is home to 85,000 people and is located about 65 miles south of New York. The event was meant to last 24 hours from 3 p.m. Saturday. Greece and Macedonia on Sunday signed a historic preliminary agreement to rename the small Balkan nation the Republic of North Macedonia, ending a row that has poisoned relations between the two neighbors since 1991. The accord must now be ratified by their respective parliaments and will be put to a referendum in Macedonia 
which must also revise its constitution by the end of the year. This is a brave, historic and necessary step for our peoples, said Greek Prime Minister or Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras. He said, we are here to heal the wounds of time, to open a path for peace, fraternization and growth for our countries, the Balkan and Europe. We have made history today to open up our future. We cannot change our geography, we cannot change our history. What we can shape is our future and we have set the stage today to have a common European future based on cooperation uh, and mutual respect and friendship. And if we are here today is first of all to thank the two sides because they make us all Europeans proud of the capacity to find through diplomacy, through dialogue, a win-win solution for a problem that uh, was long-standing for uh, too many decades and that makes Europe more peaceful, more united and that also opens the way for the entire region of the Balkans to live in a different uh, kind of atmosphere. Tsipras domestic critics say he has bargained away Greece's diplomatic advantages, the power of veto over EU and NATO accession for a deal that could backfire specifically by officially recognizing a Macedonian language and nationality. It is almost certain that the country will be called Macedonia by the broader world instead of North Macedonia, opponents of the deal argue. Officials in Athens insist that the deal will help stabilize the historically volatile Balkan region, permitting Greece to focus on other regional challenges, Turkey among them. Macedonia has admitted to the United Nations in 1993 under the provisional name of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, but more than 120 countries, including Russia and the United States, have recognized the Balkan country under the name of Republic of Macedonia. Eagle News International will be right back. Health is our most important asset and it should always be a constant effort to seek ways to take care of it. That includes professional medical help from the best available. The Manila Beijing Medical Associated Incorporated is known as one of the most
Economies sent most Asian markets tumbling after the United States and China imposed tit-for-tat tariffs on billions of dollars of imports. Energy firms were among the biggest losers as oil prices plunged ahead of a key OPEC meeting where Saudi Arabia and Russia are expected to lift a two-year-old production cap. Donald Trump's decision to hit China with 25% levies was met with an immediate retaliation moving the two closer to a trade war that could potentially batter the global economy. The announcement came despite weeks of talks between the two sides. <coughs> Tokyo ended 0.8% down while Singapore sank more than 1%, Seoul dropped 1.3% and Manila tumbled 2.5%. Wellington and Bangkok were both down, but Sydney eked out a 0.2% gain. Hong Kong and Shanghai were closed for public holidays. German prosecutors said Audi chief executive Rupert Stadler had or Rup Rupert Stadler had been arrested in connection with parent company Volkswagen a Dieselgate or Dieselgate Emissions Cheating Scandal. The dramatic development comes a week after Munich prosecutors raided Stadler's home after charging him with fraud and falsification of documents that allowed diesel vehicles equipped with cheating software to be sold to European cons customers. Prosecutors said the arrest was justified because of the risk of concealment of evidence. Stadler's arrest is the most high profile yet in the Dieselgate crisis, which started when the Volkswagen Group admitted in 2015 to equipping some 11 million diesels worldwide with defeat devices designed to dupe pollution tests. VW's luxury subsidiary Audi has long faced suspicions that its engineers developed the software used in the scam. Audi's former head of engine development was taken into custody in September 2017. In other news, Volvo announced that from 2025, at least 25% of the plastics used in every newly launched Volvo car will be made from recycled material. Volvo cars also urged auto industry suppliers to work more closely with car makers to develop next generation components that are as sustainable as possible especially with regards to containing more recycled plastics the xc40 already uses recycled plastic bottles for its interior and door liner to demonstrate the viability of its 25 percent by 25 ambition the company has unveiled a specially built version of its xc60 <coughs> t8 plug-in hybrid SUV that looks identical to the existing model but has said but has had several of its plastic components replaced with equivalents containing recycled materials the United Nations welcomed Volvo's plan more than 8 million tons of plastics end up in the oceans every year threatening marine life from fish stocks to coral reefs We'll be back with more news right after this break. The machine is back at it. Guns and Roses, not in this lifetime tour. The rock spectacle of 2018 comes to the Philippines. November 11th, 2018 at Philippine Arena, Bulacan. Quick sale for fan club members on June 8th, 10 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Public on sale June 9, 10 a.m. Don't miss Guns N' Roses. Brought to you by MMI Live and Prestige Worldwide.
Lava races across roads from a Kilauea fissure on Hawaii's Big Island. Take a look. Experts are still trying to determine how fast the lava is flowing, but witnesses say it's unprecedented. Meanwhile, CBS Honolulu affiliate KMGB said a 5.3 earthquake struck Hawaii's Kilauea summit Friday afternoon, the latest in a series of increased seismic activity overnight Thursday into Friday. Activity climbed to 40 events per hour with up to five earthquakes per hour that were greater than magnitude 3. Also, seeming fissures in the Kilauea volcano first began to crack open the spread lava and spread lava across Hawaii's Lailani Estates neighborhood on May 3, 2018. And since then, USGS reported that more than 20 fissures have opened on the Kilauea's lower east rift zone, through, although most of the lava flows have been small and short-lived. Not so far for, or not so for fissure aid that cracked in the early or in the earth has been regularly generating large fountains of lava that soar tens to hundreds of feet into the air. It has produced a large channelized lava flow that has acted like a river eating through the landscape as it flows towards the sea. While the fissure aid lava flow initially remained in relatively narrow channels, it began to widen significantly as it neared the coastline and passed over flatter land. It evaporated Hawaii's largest lake in a matter of hours and devastated the communities of Vacation Land and Kapoho, destroying home or hundreds of homes. According to USGS estimates, Kilauea has erupted more than 110 million cubic meters of lava. That is enough to fill four or 45,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools cover Manhattan Island to a depth of seven feet, or that's two meters, or fill 11 million dump trucks. However, that is only about half of the volume erupted at nearby Mauna Loa in a major eruption in 1984. USGS warns that the new land at Kapoho Bay is quite dynamic, fragile, and dangerous since lava deltas are built on unconsolidated fragments and sand, the loose material can abruptly collapse or quickly erode in the surf. To other news now, members of the Iglesia Ni Cristo or Church of Christ in Hawaii spent their weekend visiting a fire station in the town of Waipahu as part of their ongoing church or outgoing outreach to the community as they also draw closer to the 50th anniversary of the church in the West. EBC Hawaii correspondent Mio Asenas has more. The young members of the Church of Christ on Oahu, along with their parents, spent their Saturday morning at the fire station in Waipahu. <laughs> the activity began with a welcome and orientation from the firefighters. The children were also shown around the station as well as the fire trucks. Oh, the kids like that! Afterwards, church officials showed to the firefighters a video about the English in Cristo and its role in helping communities around the world. Upon receiving gifts from the INC members, the station chief expressed his appreciation for today's visit. Anything that improves our community and people and that help people is that's what we're all about. I think our community is still growing. Um, you know, we do have just like many communities, a um, amount of uh, homeless issues to deal with and stuff like. So you know, we have the challenges like everybody else, and we're there to meet it and do our best. The chief also took time to share his thoughts on recent events that firefighters throughout Hawaii have experienced in the past year. Um, that, that was a very challenging fire. Um, our guys did a, ter a tremendous job. Our firefighters worked really hard. Um, the outcome could have been worse. I, you know, we all take away lessons learned from that, um, and we move forward in a positive direction. 
it's made us stronger. Uh, we've, improved, we've improved training also because of that and safety. Chief Len Chenko even offered some friendly advice to anyone interested in joining the Honolulu Fire Department and to everyone in Hawaii about having responsible fun this summer. We're always looking for good personnel. I mean, every department has that challenges and, um, you know, we are, we are promoting and we are hiring. So if there's any good candidates out there, hey, get your name in the hat, you know, come and join us. This is a great job, very fulfilling uh, job. We do good work. Please, everybody stay safe. It is hurricane season. You know, pay attention. Go out and start start preparing. Don't wait to the last moment. Keep all your family safe and have a happy and safe summer. From Wapahu, Hawaii, I'm Mio Asenas from Eagle News. I'm one with 25. <laughs>Meanwhile, in Australia, thousands have turned out to celebrate WA Day. The good weather brought out big crowd and free public events during the occasion. And at the scene were Ivan Medrano and Jessa May Miot. Over the course of two days, from June 3rd to June 4th, Australians come together to celebrate WA Day, a day dedicated to commemorating the many reasons why Western Australia is so great. From its rich indigenous culture to its diversity to its laid back lifestyle, there are many reasons why to be happy here. Across the nine sites this event takes place in, Elizabeth Key takes place in the center of the celebration, putting forth its own array of activities to take part in, such as 12 booths, concerts, artworks, and playing zones for children. Celebrated every first Monday of June annually, WA Day has become an occasion everyone looks forward to, no matter how long they have identified themselves as Western Australians. Despite WA being the biggest state in Australia, Western Australian Day is a statewide celebration in order to ensure that the Western Australian spirit is truly being upheld and showcased. WA Day was a great opportunity for families to share laughter and bonds together. It also encouraged many citizens who may be from different cultural backgrounds to see what it means to be Western Australians. Despite the cold and rainy forecast, Elizabeth Key was still filled with thousands of Western Australians celebrating WA Day. A total of 47 food trucks, different art exhibitions focusing on the outback nature of WA and musical entertainment was scattered all over the venue to cater to everyone's interest. There were also fireworks display during the first night of the festival. The rain definitely did not dampen the pride and happiness each of the attendees felt while celebrating their home state, Western Australia. WA is considered to be the fastest growing state in Australia. This of course is due to the hard working Western Australians, as well as to the abundance of natural resources that can be found here. WA Day celebrations are a chance for Western Australians to see how far Western Australia has come from its humble beginnings and to inspire them to continue contributing great achievements for the future. In Elizabeth Key, Perth, Australia, reporting for Eagle News International, I'm Ivan Madrano. And I'm Jessa Mimi. And, and we, we are, are 1 with 25. Thank you, Ian, Ivan, and, and uh, Jessa May. <laughs> we'll be back with more news right after this break. Stay tuned. Health is our most important asset, and it should always be a constant effort to seek ways to take care of it. That includes professional medical help from the best available. The Manila Beijing Medical Associated Incorporated is known as one of the most specialized centers in medical services backed by several experienced physicians in Chinese medicine. At an accuracy rate of 98%, countless patients who visited Manila Beijing Medical Associated Incorporated have already been treated and cured. Marami po hospital na napuntahan pero wala ring nangyayari. Somebody introduced me to Manila, Beijing, Medical Associated. After two treatments,
unanimously agreed to extend the contract of Secretary General Patrick Bowman until 2031. Mr. Bowman has held the position since 2003. In 2010, his contract has renewed until 2022. FIBA President Horacio Moratore said they are very pleased with the work that Patrick Bowman had done. He has helped FIBA become a solid organization thanks to the implementation of concrete measures such as, as the introduction of a new, efficient, modern structure and governance system which unites the whole FIBA family, integrates its key stakeholders and protects our values and construction of the House of Basketball, our, the first and very on-purpose-built headquarters, and the signing of long-term commercial partnership, providing for a stable and strong financial foundation which supports all of the FIBA family for the next decade. Mr. Bowman, a Swiss national, joined FIBA in 1994 as a lawyer and a year later was appointed Deputy Secretary General of Basketball's World Governing Body. In 2002, he has unanimously appointed FIBA Secretary General by the Central Board and five years later became a member of the International Olympic Committee. Prior to joining the FIBA, he was involved in basketball as a player, coach and referee in Switzerland and Italy. Mr. Bowman is married and has two children. In football, Mexico stunned World Cup holders Germany on Sunday, inflicting a 1-0 defeat that throws the German's title defense in disarray as Neymar's Brazil stuttered to a draw against Switzerland. The outstanding Herving Lozano smashed home the Mexican winner in the 35th minute at Moscow Lezinki Stadium, leaving Manuel Neuer clutching at thin air on his return to the German goal after a nine-month injury absence. Tony Cruz crashed a shot against the crossbar for Germany, but they were never able to get back into the match as they slid their first defeat in their opening game of a World Cup since 1982. Germany coach Joachim Lowe did not mince his words about his side's performance, saying his team had played very badly in the first half of the Group F tie. If Germany finished as group runners-up, they could face Brazil in a clash of World Cup titans in the next round, a perfect chance for the Brazilians to avenge the humiliating 7-1 defeat to the Germans on home soil in 2014. Meanwhile, Mexican goalkeeper Guillermo Ochoa's stunning performance in his team's surprise 1-0 win over the World Cup champions Germany has earned him accolades, praise, and of course memes. And these are the stories for EN Sports. I'm Ben Bernaldez and I'm one with 25. Meanwhile, thousands of jubilant Mexico supporters partied in the streets of the capital after their team's shock 1-0 victory over World Cup holders Germany, singing, dancing, blaring car horns, and cheering El Tre. The earth literally moved in quake-prone Mexico City when Herving Chucky Lozano smashed home the game-winning goal in the 35th minute at Moscow's Luzhniki Stadium. A football earthquake of joy. Take a look. Thanks, Ben. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Tumblr. Also, check out our boards and Pinterest and pictures on Instagram. I'm Sam Cepeda. Thanks for joining us. That's it for tonight's broadcast. I'm Alma Angeles, and we're, we're one, one with 25. 25.